Hello and welcome to Donna's Crafty Creations. I'm Donna and today I have a Canvas Workspace project of the week for you. Now it's a little different than what I usually do for these projects in that it's not going to be a tutorial. Instead, it's going to be a construction video showing you how to put the project together. But I'm going to give you a free download. The file will be for the Canvas workspace and the Brothers Scan and Cut machine. So it's going to be an FCM file and not an SVG. You'll find a link to the zip file in the download section under this video. So all you have to do is extract it and then you can bring the files into your machine or into Canvas workspace. And here's what I'm going to be making today. This is a castle, a medieval castle, actually. You see the inspiration here on the left, and then my rendition of this medieval castle. Now, you're going to find that this is a rather large project, the way I have designed it for myself, as far as the dimensions go. But you can easily resize this. You can even make it bigger if you wanted to. But if you want to scale it down, you can do that as well. All you have to do is be sure that you group everything at the same, all the different parts of the file together so that they will all be downsized at the same time resized. Okay, so I enjoyed making this project. I hope you enjoy watching me make this project. It was a more than a week <laughs> of prototype after prototype until I thought I finally got it right and I think I'm pretty much there. So if you want to learn how to make this medieval castle then stick with me and I'll show you how. I'm going to start with what I've labeled as A, towers and turrets. There are four of these, and they're all done exactly the same. They have all the same pieces. And I've put three of these together already, but I've saved one so that we could do that together. And I'm going to start by putting the mats on, because it's easiest to put those on while this is still flat. So, to show you what we've got for this piece, is we've got the tower itself, with the turrets, there are four of these, which are going to go like so. We have the mats. Now, it's going to be very difficult to see this, but I've got some little pieces of acetate. Well, this is transparency film, actually, for an overhead projector. And this is an option. You don't have to put these in, but I'm going to put these here behind the windows. I've got the sides, so there'll be two that have windows and two that don't. Then we have the mats that are going to go on top of the turrets here. They'll go like that. And then once we've glued those in place, we have this little square here that will be used here in the top to secure those tabs. We all finally have the mats for the windows, which are going to go here. And as I said, they're all done exactly the same. And I'm going to start with these mats here. So I'm just going to move those off to the side. So those will be placed like this. And then once those are in place, I'm going to flip it round and I'll put in the coverings for the windows as well. So let me get on with this. I'm going to speed it up for you and then we'll move on.
Right, now we can do the turrets. Now for these, I'm going to mat them. And you can see they've got a score line here. How they'll be affixed is, once we get this together, then these tabs down, and they're just going to go on top like that. So I'll get the mats on first, and then we'll put this together and put the turrets in place. So once again, I'm going to speed it up for you, and then Right, those are all done. So now I'm going to form this box, which is the for the tower. So I'm going to set that tab in like so, and then put our adhesive here, and then just fold that down, and it's nice and flat, and then you can give it lots of pressure to seal it. Again, just put your adhesive here on this tab. And simply fold it over like that. You can see you can line it up. Run your finger along there and you'll see that that's closed and even. And then you can give it some pressure. need to let it dry for a little bit then you'll be able to open that up and we have our tower as you can see there are tabs at either end meaning that you can put those in like that and leave it open if you like because you might want to place a tea light, a battery operated tea light or some other little lights in there, in which case you could just leave that open or you could cut another square and put it on the bottom to close it up. It's up to you what you'd like to do. I'm going to leave mine open because I want that option of having the, the tea light. And now I'm ready to put these turrets into place. The score line is here just under where those mats are. I'm going to fold these. Right, sorry for the interruption there, but I'm back now and we're ready to put on the turrets. Now, these, as you can see, have a score line here, they're just going to fit right here on that tab. These tabs you're going to fold in like that. I'll just fold these over so I can place that on the surface there. And I'm going to give it a little bit of adhesive here in the corners to hold that down while we get that in place. And then afterwards, we'll fit this piece over top and that will help to keep those secure. So you just need to give it a chance to take hold here, give it a good press. And then you're going to put on your adhesive here along the bottom. and then just glue it in place. Just get it where you want it, and then you can reach your fingers in there. You can also probably get in through the opening and just press along there, like I'm doing with this bone folder. 
And you've got your first of the turrets installed. You want to do the same on the other three pieces. And then we'll start to close up the bottom here. As I said, you can leave that open. So you could put a tea light in there, or you can close it with another square. So I'll do that, and then we'll go on to the next step, which is going to be the sides or the walls, the battlements for this little castle. So just finishing up with that piece on top and as you can see it's secured all those tabs there it's covered those up and that is our tower turret complete now we're going to move on to the sides the walls or the battlements are part B we've got for that these two main pieces which make the front and the back of the box that's going to form those sides. So we have this to go on top. We've got some supports that are going to go inside the wall here that are going to hold this plank here essentially so your arrowmen would you know, be able to walk along there or your watchman could walk along that. And then I've just got these little pieces that are going to cover up the tabs. For the walls, we've also got this as your mat and just a little decorative piece that we can add on to here as well as the mats for these turrets here. Again, it's easiest to work with this while it's flat. So we're going to start with our front piece here because the front piece is just slightly larger than the back. That, so what I've done is just put a very faint B for back and F for front on mine so that I know the difference. And I'm going to mat that front piece with this. I did not have enough of the other card to continue on with it, so I just chose something that I thought would coordinate with it well, and it just adds a little more interest to this, because it's not necessarily meant to be realistic, but still keep that sort of castle vibe going <laughs> to capture the essence of it I guess you could say so let's get this on here we're just going to center that between the score marks there and I've also got this decorative piece that's going to go along here you don't have to put that on that's just an option I'm going to take my glue and run it along those edges there, just dab here and there really. And then place that where I, it looks good to me. And then give it a press and turn it over press from the back side as well and that is all we need to do for the front now for the back there's really nothing except to fold in the tabs and apply our adhesive the same way we're going to do with this one now what I'm going to do is do this one first the front one because that back one may or may not fit as I want because depending on you know how you've formed the tabs or how you've cut it in the first place, it could be either a very loose fit or it could be a really tight fit, in which case 
we could just dry fit it and I'll show you what I mean in just a moment when we try it out. So I want to get one of the sides first. So I, I want the front piece together. Just put my glue here on these tabs and we'll form the front of this box. That's together, so now we can go on to our back piece. Fold this along those score lines. And then I'm just going to fold those tabs in for the moment and leave them till I've tried this out to see how it's going to fit. And then I'll know whether I need to just go ahead and permanently fix those or just dry fit it. So what I'm going to do is fit it inside like this. And, ah, oh, it's a perfect fit actually. Really, there's no need to even apply the glue because we have another, uh, I have another uh, solution for it. if you have a loose fit is with the turret, it has two fold lines, one along the bottom of these pieces and then another that's going to actually wrap around the top which is going to secure it and hold it upright and then it's going to wrap around and keep that box securely closed. It also gives us a guideline to place our little plank here or our walkway. So, first thing though is to apply the mats. And we're going to do that just like we did with the tower. So they'll go all along that piece there. Get the first one down. And it's starting to come together pretty quickly here. As I said, you don't have to have yours this side. You size. You could use smaller dimensions and have it a, a small castle, or you could have a larger one. Maybe you want to just eliminate the central part of it, which is what really dictated how large I wanted to make my walls and my towers in the first place, because I wanted plenty of room and I wanted a a reasonable size box but I could have if I'd gone with a a one inch or a two inch or you know even one and a half inch uh, gift box in the center then I could have reduced the size of these and that is the little surprise part of this is that there is a gift or storage box that's going to sit in the middle of this castle which would uh, usually be occupied either by the keep which I'm going to call it the keep <laughs> and uh, or just a, an empty space would uh, would be the called the uh, I believe it's called the Bailey so let's um, move on with those then That's together, so now we can go on to our back piece. Fold this along those score lines. And then I'm just going to fold those tabs in for the moment and leave them till I've tried this out to see how it's going to fit. And then I'll know whether I need to just go ahead and permanently fix those or just dry fit it. So what I'm going to do is fit it inside like this. And, ah, oh, it's a perfect fit actually. Really, there's no need to even apply the glue because we have another, uh, or I have another uh, solution for it. if you have a loose fit is with the 
it has two fold lines, one along the bottom of these pieces and then another that's going to actually wrap round the top which is going to secure it and hold it upright and then it's going to wrap around and keep that box securely closed. It also gives us a guideline to place our little plank here or our walkway. So first thing though is to apply the mats and we're going to do that just like we did with the tower so they'll go all along that piece there. Get the first one down and it's starting to come together pretty quickly here. But as I said, you don't have to have yours this side. You size. You could use smaller dimensions and have a, a, a small castle, or you could have a large one. Maybe you want to just eliminate the central part of it, which is what really dictated how large I wanted to make my walls and my towers in the first place, because I wanted plenty of room, and I wanted a a reasonable size box but I could have if I'd gone with a a one inch or two inch or you know even one and a half inch uh, gift box in the center then I could have reduced the size of these and that is the little surprise part of this is that there is a gift or storage box that's going to sit in the middle of this castle which would uh, usually be occupied either by the keep which I'm going to call it the keep <laughs> and uh, or just a, an empty space would uh, would be the called the uh, I believe it's called the Bailey so let's um, move on with those then that's the last the matting there and you're probably getting an idea as to the size of this. I hold the tower and the sides together. Now, you can make yours whatever size you want. You don't have to have it as long as this. This is about seven inches. The reason I've done this is because of what I'm going to put into the center of the castle and the size of that. So I wanted to proportion it a bit more. But of course you can make yours much smaller. And in fact, if I did this again, I would probably do that. Or if I'm going to leave out the feature in the middle, then uh, you could have a much smaller uh, scale. But you know, you, you can uh, make yours whatever size you like and just use the same methodology in constructing it. So now we're ready to put this on, and as I said, we've got this score line here, which is right under these pieces, and we've got this one, which is going to go around like that. So that one folds back like that, and if you look at it this way, you would call that a mountain fold, where this would be a valley fold. So that makes the V and that makes the M or the shape of a mountain. So that's just going to go along here. Put the adhesive here on the back. We can actually go ahead and put all of it on and put it down as one complete piece. So I've aligned that, just 
line it up to the flush here with the wall. Then this drops over. And this piece here is about an inch. Should be about an inch because this is half an inch tab that we had there. And I've brought that so it completely comes over there. And you can see now that that's completely secured, that box. So now we have the placement for our little walkway. Now to create this, I've got these three supports. We have score lines here to bring the, the support that's going to uh, be attached to the, the plank here. And then these are going to fold in and like so over to create the tab where you'll glue that piece down. So you just need to put your glue here on these two tabs that fold in and they pretty much meet up with each other. Just give that a good press here. Apply some pressure. And you have that piece. And then to cover this tab here, I mean, you don't have to, but I just, if you want to be able to cover that up and it will also as you can see there was just popped open will help to keep that closed it's just to cut a little scrap piece that would fit in there let's get that back in place first that cures a little more and you want it to look a little more pleasing though it is just a tab it's going to make a huge difference I'll place that in there like so and that covers that up so I'll do the same with the other two and then I'll show you how we will attach the plank I've got all these together now and we're ready to attach them to the plank. Now just so I can remember where I want to place my glue, I'm going to take a pencil and just do a faint little G on the back. And where I'm putting this is, just putting my ruler in, you can see, the piece where the plank is going to attach is the one inch side and the three quarters inch side is where the glue is going to go. So I'm going to put a G for glue here. And then the plank is going to be attached here. Like that. So I'll do the same on these. So I know I've got my glue where I want it in case I step away for a moment or just get generally confused as I can sometimes and I'm going to bring in then the plank that's going to be positioned just where that tab finishes like that. You can place these supports wherever you like. I'm going to bring mine in about a quarter of an inch from each side. So I just use my grid here on my mat to show me where to place those. The one in the middle, I can just pretty much eyeball it. This doesn't have to be absolutely precise, just something that 
you think looks good. And then I'm going to move that and I want to make sure that it becomes flush with that plank there. So with this glue, because it gives me a little time to move things around, it's ideal for that. So I can move that, get it where I want it, give it some pressure, and then make sure that that is flush against that. I can press up a bit like that. And that is in place so that it will flip like this and this is going to be secured to the wall so we've got one of the ends done we'll do the other and we'll do the one in the middle neck after that then let's get this one down So you can see I've centered that as best I can between those two supports and now this is ready to attach you want to be sure you've got it in the right orientation so your uh, turret pieces are, are going to be up there I'm going to bring this in and you're going to Place it like that. So your glue will go along these three pieces here, the little support pieces, and then be, and then you will glue it to the the wall. And now for the center of the castle, which is the keep and the little surprise, which is a gift or storage box. So we've got these pieces. You'll have the pieces that are going to form your box or the keep in this case. You'll have two that have this hole in it, which is the thumb pull hold, and then two solid pieces. And then for the mats, Again, you'll have these that are going to fit around that hole and then the uh, other two sides. And keep in mind also, if you're using a directional paper, how you cut it out. Now this one, I had to cut out upside down because when this is formed, it's going to form the uh, pull section. So they're going to be at the bottom. So it's going to actually be upside down. So I wanted my trees to be in the right orientation. So set those aside. And then for the closure uh, part, the, the bottom and the top of the, the box, I went with a slightly heavier cardstock. And I didn't have a black. So I decided just to go with something different, which is fine I'll use this one for the bottom but then for the top all I did then was take a piece of the matching paper which is a lot uh, thinner than the card itself and just glued that on top so let's put this together and we'll start with the top or the lid which is the one with the hole in it this is on the one inch score line or tab position. I'm going to fold that over like that because that is going to reinforce that. It's going to double that up. And then you also, because you put that circle right in the middle of that score line, that's going to provide you a little pull, ta uh, pull um, tab, I guess you could call it, so that you can. Uh, pull the, the box up without any problem. So we just need to put our glue on the inside of this tab here. Oop. 
press that into place. I'm going to do the same over here. And again, that's just giving it that extra strength because when you're pulling something in and out, you know, it can start to bend and weaken. So this will help to give it a little more lasting power. Get that in there. Now our other piece is going to attach to the end here. So you need to make sure that you've oriented this correctly. You need to be sure that your tab is this way. It can attach like that. And that your pull that in and that your little thumb pull there is in the right orientation just like that. So you're going to take this tab here and attach it to this straight edge here. And you just need to butt those up together. You'll put your adhesive here. And as with the other pieces, we'll put our mats on while this is still flat before we try putting it completely together. So I just match that up there, let that fold over and catch on there. And then I can flip it like that and run my finger along the edges there and see that that's even. And then I can come in with a tool just to help me get that glue spread out and secured. So now we have this long piece that is going to fold in like that to form our box. So I'll go ahead and get these in place and then we'll move on to the matting. The mats are going to be exactly as we've done before. So I'm going to make sure that I've got the direction correct here. That one will have to be like that. We'll get those glued in place. To this together now, we're just going to put glue on our glue tab here and then fold this side down like that. Really easy. Then we will be able to put our lid on or bottom, whichever you want to think of it as. So put that glue down. Bring that over, you can match it up at the edge there, and again, you can run your finger there to see that that is meeting, and then give it a press. And you have these glue tabs here. A little bit of glue on the ends just to help it grab before you put the square piece on top. Give that a moment and we'll do the other side as well.
So those are all glued down now and we can bring in the closure here. This square is going to just fit along the edges here and as you can see it's slightly smaller so that it doesn't overhang but still covers that aperture sufficiently. So I'm just going to go along the perimeter of this, get my glue down, and then I'll be ready to put this square on top. Place it like that. Give it a slight bit of pressure, but now you can turn it over. You can see inside. We can go round and press that down. Now, as I said, I used this different color here. And this was a, um, a thicker piece of card, just to give it a little more strength. But now, what I'm going to do is come in with this other piece of American Craft cardstock to cover that up inside, so that I have a lining as well. Now you could do a different color lining. You could put this in there, for example, and have it match the rest of the box. But I've just got another piece of the, the black that I'm going to place inside of there. I've got that all lined now. It just drops into there. And I'll go around with my bone folder, press that in, and I can set it aside to dry. The lid, or the bottom actually, of the box is exactly the same, except it doesn't have those holes, of course. And there's no need to mat this because it's going to be completely hidden inside. So we'll make sure that we have this matching up. You still have that one inch tab there for that extra strength. And then the half inch tabs here. I'm going to put that together like that. Then secure it with glue on this end that attaches to the other. And we'll put the uh, bottom together as well. So let me do that and we'll be right back. I realized I made a mistake. This is the lid, so I want the decorative piece, this piece, to be on top. Now the my glue had not set yet, so I was able to easily pull that off. But if I hadn't been able to, all I would have done is just put that on top of the existing piece. So I'm really sorry about that. I'll use this piece though in the bottom of the box. Put this on next and then we'll get that bottom put on and be back on track. I've got this prepared now. Got those tabs down and I'm going to put my bottom piece on. Just reusing that square that I had used before by mistake. Put that down and then for the inside I'll repeat this and what I've done is also mount a piece of that same paper onto this piece of card that will create a lining for this. 
make it just a little D bit. D is the hexagonal turret, which is the piece that's going to go on top of the gift box. So that tower is made up of these pieces. You have two exactly the same with three windows on each side. And then we have the turret itself, the roof, which is going to make a shape like this, more circular shape. We've also got the mats, and I've got two different kinds of window styles. Um, you don't have to do that. I just decided to make it uh, a little different. So I've got two different styles there. I'm going to then alternate those like that. So that's got the six panes where this has the four. And then I'll go back to the six, the four, and so on. And then the mat cover the rest of the window is going to be like that. So let me do that and then we'll put the top together. I also put a piece of the transparency film on the reverse side of these pieces the windows just like I did with the tower windows and now I'm ready to get this attached so I'm going to fold along these score lines and I've got the end glue tabs that's going to go together just like the other pieces where you have that one glue tab and then a straight edge. Just glue that together like that. The bottom half of this tower is now ready. We will be bringing these pieces in like so. And we have a hexagon that is going to be glued into place. I'll have one on the outside and then again on the inside, just like we did with the gift box, because that's going to give it the stability and strength required for that. For the hexagonal, one of the pieces I mounted onto some of that same card I used in the box just to give it a little more strength and I'll use that on the inside and then I have this piece for the outside and that is going to fit around here so we just need to pull these in to shape and we can fiddle with this a little bit just to get it to fit correctly and that is going to go on top like that. Let me get these sides back together. And then I'll get the hexagons glued into place. I'm going to put the hexagon that's going to go inside in first. That will help it keep it um, rigid here for me. So go along those tabs in there. Then drop that in place. Let me compress that down. start to give it its shape. I'm 
And we'll do the same thing on the top. Now we can put the piece on for the top here. And that's just going to be glue all over. side it's going to be the tower then you can see how that inner piece there gave that that strength and stability and shape so I I do recommend, if you can do it, to double up on your inside piece. But of course that's going to depend on the cardstock you're using. So there we have it. Now, this piece, we have six sections here for our hexagon. Then we have these mounting pieces matting. They are going to go just like that. If you want to put a flag or a banner on the top of your tower or turret, I would suggest you either poke a hole in here after you've got it together, or you could do something like I've done. I've just wrapped this round, put a little, make it made it into like a little tube there, and fed this piece of wire round and through and twisted it, and then I can just lay it in here, and when I go to put this together I can have that inside of here so I'll just put that down with some of this red liner tape I can put my glue on this tab here Fold that over. Make sure that's even. Be able to then, because of that wire, move that flag where I want it then. There we are. But like I said, you could wait and then just poke a hole in there if you're using something like maybe a cocktail stick, something like that. Right, so let me give that a chance to secure itself. And then I'll put my glue on these tabs here, which just fold in like so. We'll attach it here to the top of this hexagonal piece. Now this is probably the most fiddly bit of this whole project. Got my glue on all the tabs and now I'm just going to hold it into place here. And remember I don't have a quick grab glue. You might, in which case it might be even easier for you. But I'm just going to hold it there. Got it all positioned like I want. And in a bit that's going to start to set. The other side of this of course is still open so we can go in there 
and push with our fingers around that top piece. And continue to press it from the top as well. Pretty soon that's going to be right where we want it. And there we have it. With our little flag as well. Right, now we're ready to move on to part E, which is the Barbican and the Portocollis with drawbridge. We're getting there. Part E is the Barbican, which is this piece, and the portcullis and the drawbridge. For the Barbican, we've got a mat that's going to go across like that, which, as you remember, matches these pieces at the top of the tower and the walls. And when it comes to the drawbridge, I've got a little extra for you, but you don't have to do that. What I'm going to do, it's just an idea. I thought it would be nice to have something that was sort of semi-functional. You could leave the drawbridge out altogether if you like. I'm matting this as one whole piece, but there are score lines here. So I'm just going to use my fingers to create score lines for this mat as well. Just following along there, and it will bend. I've got these glue tabs up here. And that is your barbican finished. Then this will fold in like so. And the tabs on the back are going to glue to one of your side walls like that. So it will be covering up some of this decoration, but not a whole lot. So let's get these glued down. Just fold that tab in there. It's going to go under that side tab. And then this will fold over. And that's going to give you a very secure tab there. And once that's together, we can cover this top piece with this little strip here. That will finish that off. I'm going to set this aside and we'll move on to the porticus. Now this is the joining piece. We use this when we want to make something round or we need to go around curves. So these tabs will fold along those score lines and you can just use your fingers to sort of curve this or you could try using a bone folder as well. Just something to give it some roundness to break those fibers down a bit. You could use a pencil, pen, something like that would be fine. You want to curve that. And we're going to use these pieces to go on the front and back. Now, I have one that has two little holes in it because I'm going to attach my drawbridge with a little bit of wire. If you don't want to do that, you could just put 
make them both solid without the little holes or you could leave the holes it, it doesn't matter it's up to you but I've that's the reason I've done that and for my drawbridge what I've done is take two of these and glue them together match up the holes just to make it a little bit stronger and for the the uh, front of the gate here I'm going to map that with these pieces here in fact we could probably just go ahead and do that now before we try to put all that together so it's nice and flat all I've done is just make a sort of gate with these little tiny openings here peek through there or put your bow and arrow through there so just get those into place like that okay and now what we'll do is we're going to attach this piece now what we can do is we can have this is the back of it so make it a little easier to construct what we can do is just wrap it around so that it's these little teeth or glue tabs are to the back because you're, you're not even going to see that and then we'll be able to bring in the gate and place it right on top and that will hide all those tabs as well so I'm going to start applying the glue you can do just a few at a time if that helps depending again on the type of glue you have you just form that around like so And I'm going to dab my glue on now. And as I said, we're going to place it on the outside. We can wrap that round like that. We can get those to hold to start with. be able to move the others into place. Just take your time, no need to rush. Just press them into place. Turn it over as well, give it some pressure on the back. and then add our glue to the next tabs.
you like, once you've got this together, you can take another piece, which doesn't even have to be matching. It can be any piece of scrap that you might have around. And you can glue that to the back. And that will also help keep those tabs secured. Give you a nice smooth surface for attaching this to the walls. So just place that there. And then we're ready to put our front piece on. Let's bring that in. That is going to go on to here. So going to make sure that's what I wanted. I'm going to put the glue on all at one time because what I'm going to do is press this into place and then turn it over so that I can apply the pressure to it. So let's get that into the shape we want. Give it a moment to make sure those holes are still visible. If we need to, we can always poke through those again. And I think I might have to, or I could trim back on this tab here. I think I'll do that. I'm just going to cut that tiny bit off there, which is obscuring my hole. There'll still be enough for it to grab hold. That looks much better. You can see right through those holes now. You can cover this section of the porticus with a strip, which you can also just manipulate. Take those fibers down and it'll start to take shape. You can place that around it like that and glue it. And if you need to trim it, Can do that as well. Might need mine to be trimmed just a tiny bit. Let's see, let's get that on there. No, I think it looks all right. Now, something I probably should have done before putting that front on is to attach my wire with my drawbridge. But I think I can still get into there. This, as I said, is the drawbridge, the two pieces together, formed together. And on one side of it, which is going to draw up like that, I'm going to put this mat on. So it looks a bit like a gate. As I said, you don't have to do this. This is just a, a little touch I thought would be nice. I'm going to get that on there. And for the other side, I have this solid piece here. 
if you don't want to have it as a at least a semi-functioning drawbridge you could just mat it with something like that or just leave it as it is get that on and now I'm ready to attach this so what I've got is just this little thin piece of wire which I'm going to feed through these holes then I'm going to feed it into here We're just going to wrap those around or you could tape them inside maybe you want to be able to remove that later you could but you could just tuck that back in there and you will see now your gate or your drawbridge will fold down that will be secured there but you can loosen that up a little bit so that it stands like that and then when you close it you'll see the other side now I've not put anything yet on there but I could put some sort of little mechanism to keep that closed but you probably can come up with a better idea than I could have <laughs> so, now let's put this together now, one thing you could do is, when you've decided which side of your walls is going to be where you're going to put your drawbridge, you could leave this off and be able to use that to attach this piece here a little easier. But I can still fit my fingers behind there and give it a fair bit of pressure. I just won't be able to tip it down onto the surface and I believe this is seven inches so for my center point that's going to be three and a half inches what I'll do is just make a faint pencil mark on here where that's going to be there then I can bring up the center of this to that center point there. That will attach like that and then the barbican is simply going to fit over it like so. to fit like that. Now I can try and get that on first if that helps and then get that into place which I might try. Let's see if that's going to... I think that's... yes I might do that because it's probably going to catch on these tabs back here. But I will also, if I put that on first, I can probably still slide those behind. But let's try this first. Let's put the barbican on first. So we've got that central mark. We can position this so it also is centered. Put the glue down here. You could take off this extra layer if you want when you're matting it. But it just was easier for me to do it all as one solid piece. Although I could have stopped here and in fact I would probably do that if I did that again. I would just cut that bit off. Let's get this down. I can set it on the table here and get in there with my fingers and my bone folder and 
start to press that down. I noticed when I put this together where these tabs are, there it does leave a little gap here. So all I did was take another strip that matches and cut it to size, which I can place at the top and it will hide that. You never know it was there. That's all in place, and now we can attach our portacolors with the drawbridge. So we're just going to put our glue here. Got that nice smooth surface to work with now. here. Once I know where I want it, let that drop down just for a moment. I'll make sure that's in place. I can still reach inside of there. Give that some pressure. Like that. We have our pool bridge. So we'll set this aside to dry and we can get on with the rest of the construction just bringing all those pieces together. Now I do have this option here, which is something that you may or may not want. What I'm going to do with these is I'm going to glue these ladders together just to make them a little stronger. And I'll have them propped up. I haven't let that dry yet propped up like so along these walkways so that's where they would be able to climb up. So let's get this back on and give it a chance to dry. Right, now again it's just a matter of dabbing some glue on these little pieces and match it up with the other piece. One is a long has a longer side than the other, so let's just slide that together. And we have a ladder. And then of course anything else that you want to add is up to you probably have all sorts of ideas, especially depending on how you decide to decorate this. You might, might want to make it more girly, you know, less medieval and more, you know, unique. So there we have our ladder, which we'll set aside as well. Now, let's pull in the tower. Let's get two of those going. And I'm going to grab a side as well. And these are going to go so that they are attached to one of the solid sides. So you have your windows facing the front and then the side here. And this will go like that. So it going to be recessed just a tiny bit so that means that the walkway or that plank there is going to line up against the back like that so we're just going to glue that so that it's 
together like that. You can see how big this is getting now. So if you make a smaller scale, yours might be more along those lines. So let me get the adhesive on here. And then we'll attach the other three walls, including the one with the drawbridge, which we're giving some time to dry. going to move the castle off to the side, bring in the gift or storage box along with the turret there, and this box goes together like this, and you can see there that opening we made helps us to get in and pull that apart very easily. So the next thing we need to do is to attach this. We have these glue tabs on the bottom, but to make it even easier, I've got another hexagon, which I'm going to attach here. And then that gives us a larger gluing surface to attach that. I've got the glue on the bottom of that. And I can just press that into place. So, got our flag, we can straighten that up a bit. And that is the gift or storage box complete. And that is what I'm calling the keep for this. So let's bring this back in. And we'll place that here in the middle. Now, if you want to, you can create a base for this. Now, in my case, this is, let me see, let me measure this. This is about 12 inches by 12 inches. So that would be a an entire 12 by 12 piece of card or I could use some cardboard. In fact, that's what I think I would do, is I would attach this to some cardboard. I could even add a little more width and depth to it. So maybe I want to even add a moat. Or if I just want to be able to carry it around, of course, I could make it with, so that it had a... a a side to it, a lip to the cardboard, and then you could actually glue that in place if you wanted to, but I would prefer mine to be loose so that I can easily access this gift box. So let me try and show you some of this now. When I take some photos, I should be able to pull the camera back enough so that you can see it. Let me try and just adjust this one from an overhead shot. Got the sides and then I can bring in my little ladders as well. I'll just prop them up or you could put some glue on them if you like. And put them in place but if you're just displaying it you can leave those as they are so I'm really quite pleased with this more so than I imagined and I do hope that you will try to make your own castle I think you'll have lots of fun doing it it was very relaxing actually to do this and I'm going to display it proudly somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where at the moment, but I, I'll find somewhere that I can show it off at least for a little while. And if nothing else, you always have your little gift box that you can keep separate from your castle. Thank you so much for joining me. And as I said, I do hope you give this a try yourself. Uh, I will be back with another Scan and Cut 
project of the week. I'm also planning on doing some other smaller projects which would be geared more to the beginner or those of you who might be less confident in Canvas Workspace and in your machine indeed. In fact these are some of the ideas that I've gotten recently from a, um, a subscriber or, or at least a comment uh, someone who commented on one of my videos and the labeling of the pieces was another idea I wish I could remember who the, their username right now but I know they know who they are and I do thank them very much uh, but it, I think it might help if I continue with especially the larger projects to break these down into sections for you so that you know what pieces all go with a, B, C, D, etc. So, I hope to see you again very soon. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so today. And take care of yourselves, one and all. See you again soon. Bye. Bye.